mystery that cannot be explained. An enigma that defies reason. A surprising and unexpected answer. To encounter such a mystery firsthand may change your life forever. Face to face with the greatest riddles of the ages, the world's most profound mysteries reach out and touch your life in ways you never imagined possible. Extreme Mysteries. For hundreds, no thousands of years, kings and generals, historians and archaeologists, architects and mathematicians have argued over who and how the Great Pyramids were built. Is it possible the answer can be found not in some ancient Egyptian tomb, but in an amazing tourist attraction in modern-day Florida called the Coral Castle? Barely five feet tall and weighing slightly less than 100 pounds, a man by the name of Edward Leitzkalnin seems to have accomplished the Herculean feat of quarrying, cutting, moving, and raising 1,100 tons of coral rock using only simple tools. Could he have done it by himself? Is it possible that one man, a small man at that, could cut, quarry, and move these massive coral stones by himself? Could it be there is some secret of levitation or anti-gravity known to ancient builders that was rediscovered by Edward Leedskalman? How could one man cut and set this nine-ton coral gate so precisely that even today a child can move it with one finger? The answer will amaze you. Coral Castle is perhaps America's most intriguing mystery. Like the great pyramids of Egypt, it shouldn't be there. But there it is, welcoming visitors every day into its unusual confines and its unbelievable history. Ed Lee Scowlin said he knew the secrets of how the pyramids of Egypt were built, and I believe his claim was accurate. Did Lee Scowlin somehow stumble onto some mechanism known only to ancient architects and use that knowledge to float enormous coral stones into place? Lee Scowlin apparently devoted his entire life to this project. Was it a labor of love? Why did he always work alone and at night? What was the great discovery he worked so hard to protect? The epicenter of Coral Castle's mystery is Ed Leeds Scalman himself. Who was he? Why did he leave Latvia? And how did he finally end up so far away in Florida? And is there evidence that the story Leeds Scalman told visitors about himself and the castle was less than the entire truth? Ed Leeds Scalman was born in Latvia in the year of 1887. There he trained as a cleric and also as a stone mason. In 1912, at the age of 26, he was engaged to his 16-year-old girlfriend, Agnes Scoff. The day before the wedding, she decided to call the wedding off, telling Ed that he was poor to marry her. Crushed by this sudden rejection, Ed left Latvia that year, and eventually he wound up in Florida. He constructed the Cora Castle as a future home for him, Agnes, and their children. We please believe it or not called this Feast of Love table the world's largest valentine. Ed called this the Grot of the Three Bears where the children would play, and he created this repentance corner where their naughty children could be punished. There's a letter from Andre Stavro, who investigated Ed's life in Latvia. He tells a different story. I met his relatives, found one document and one old photograph of him. In short, Ed's descendants insist that during the 1905 and 1907 uprising, he was an armed guard against the Tsar and left Latvia because of repression of the Tsar's secret police. If Lee Scalman was keeping a low profile about his past, then can we entirely trust his explanations about how he moved and lifted coral stones weighing up to 30 tons? And why would Leeds Scalman keep his actual construction methods secret? One person who knew Ed remembers asking him how he did it. 
had always seemed a little vague on just how he attacked the task of moving the huge tonnage of rock, but he told me he understood all the laws of weights and levers. To explain how he managed to move the huge stones, Ed would always tell people. I have discovered the secrets of the pyramids. I have found out how the Egyptians and the ancient builders in Peru, Yucatan and Asia, with only primitive tools, raised and set in place blocks of stone weighing many tons. If we assume that Edley Scowlin and the pyramid builders were using the same tools and methods, then based on Ed's abilities, it would have only taken approximately 4,700 workers to build the Great Pyramid instead of the 20,000 to 100,000 that is estimated. This photograph seems to show Lead Scalman using a chain hoist on a tripod structure to lift the coral blocks. Indeed, many people who knew Ed Lead Scalman believe he moved those blocks with simple, conventional tools, though no one actually saw him work. In order to prove the methods of construction that Lead Scalman used, we'd have to replicate the more difficult aspects of the work. Lead Scalin might have been able to hoist the six-ton blocks for the wall with conventional mechanical tools. But that does not explain how he raised the 23-ton obelisk, or especially this 30-ton block and this wall, all by himself and only with a 10-ton chain hoist. One of the most amazing aspects of this mystery is its complete accessibility. The castle is, after all, open to the public. So has anyone ever tried to move any of Leedskallen's structures with conventional tools? Or tried to figure out how many people would be needed to do the job? One of Ed's most remarkable works is the nine-ton door. It's so perfectly balanced on an old mill shaft that incredibly it will open to the push of one finger. In order to repair the door in 1986, Coral Castle have to hire a six-man crew with a 20-ton crane to move the door and make the needed repairs. And after the repair, the door was no longer as perfectly balanced and positioned as when Leed Scalman constructed and placed it by himself. So how did Leed Scalman do it? And just how much did Leed Scalman want the world to know? Can we discover any clues to his secret building methods in the papers and booklets he wrote? In his booklet on magnetic current, Leed Scalman said that all matter consisted of individual magnets. He believed that magnets from the middle of the Earth attracting objects containing both North and South Pole magnets cause gravity. Is it possible that Leed Scalman somehow figured out how to turn off gravity using his unconventional ideas about the nature of all matter? But isn't a world without the law of gravity really an impossibility? I was baffled about the nature of anti-gravity until a colleague asked me to describe it. I said that it was a means by which objects could be lifted. And then I realized that we were already applying anti-gravitational techniques in our everyday life. Like getting out of bed in the morning, or an airplane, rocket and forklift are all devices to overcome gravity. So I asked myself, what if there's no such thing as gravity? If, as Lee Scalning claimed, all things, all matter, consists of individual magnets, could the known properties of magnetism explain gravity? Then I began to speculate that Lee Scalman was creating anti-gravity by simply flipping the magnetic poles in his coral blocks so they would match and therefore repel the magnetic polarity of the Earth. The flywheel in Lee Scalman's tool shop consists of bar magnets set in cement. It is mounted on a fourth row camshaft. But this photo of Lee Scalman with his hand on the crank may not represent the entire operation. It is possible that there was a reciprocating engine attached to the crankshaft so that Ed could walk away and leave the flywheel running. I believe also that it became part of a radio transmitter. This photo of Ed Lee Scalman working shows him lifting a coral stone with his chain hoist on a wooden tripod. The tripod was made of old telephone poles with a small wooden box on top. Leading out of the box was a wire cable that goes down towards the ground. What was in the box is of course a mystery, but I speculate that it contained radio tuners such as those found in his tool shed. In this other photo, Ed is standing on the crossbars of the tripod. We can see that steps go up one of the poles to the small box, so it seems Leedskalner needed access to the box while he was working, perhaps to adjust the tuners.